Ephesians chapter 5. How do you like the world? It's the earth. It's the best we could get so fast. I just thought during the worship service I need a I need a I need an earth. They call it the world, but this is actually the earth. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's not in a good shape. Dear Father. The world is not in a good shape. <laughs> Father, help. The earth is round. Anybody knows the earth is round? So, if, if the earth is God's footstool and heaven is his throne, where's heaven? Okay? If heaven is above, and here's Africa, but here is South America, so there heaven is, so I got to turn the earth around. To have their heaven. So Isaiah 66 verse 1 says, we are in Ephesians 5, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. I think we were still in the tent years ago when God showed it to me the first time. But if this is the throne, God's throne is not floating in heaven. It says it's got a place to stand on. So if heaven is the throne and earth is the footstool, in other words, where's God's throne? The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. Where does God rule? Where is God's dominion shown? Where do we heal the sick, cast out demons, heal the sick? Where do we stop the rain and cause the rain to come? Where will we stop storms? Where do we do miracles, signs, and wonders? Where is the power of God shown? On earth. So where is God's throne? Okay, heaven is my throne, and earth is the footstool. Okay, so then Isaiah 55 says something to the following. As heaven is higher than the earth, so my ways and my thoughts is higher than your ways and your thoughts. Therefore, God says, repent. Change your ways and change your thoughts. So be ye renewed in the spirit of your mind. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So 1 Corinthians 2 verse 16 says, we have the mind of Christ. So we can, in, the word repent means change your mind. So if I don't get God's ways and if I don't get God's thoughts, it means I am still in another world. So Christians, we are supposed to live in God's world. Deuteronomy 28 says, you must be above only and not be beneath. Okay, so I must live a life that is a higher type of life, not in altitude, but in attitude. So it's not higher in looking up, it's higher in my way of thinking, it's higher in my way of living, it's higher in the way of power, it's higher in the way of worship, it's higher, the ways are higher, not, in other, not I have to travel somewhere to get to heaven, it's just I change my attitude and I sit with Christ on his throne. We died with Christ, raised with Christ, seated together with Christ in heavenly places 
But where am I still on earth? Jesus said to Nicodemus, nobody ever ascended into heaven except the Son of Man which is in heaven. So Jesus said, as I'm operating on earth, I'm operating from a standpoint of heaven. Same chapter says, no one can receive anything except it comes from heaven. So all authority is from heaven. All power and all authority in heaven and in earth is given unto me. Go and preach the gospel to all creation. So the authority comes from heaven but it's operating right here on the earth sorry this ball is in a shape okay so it can't turn but wherever I turn this earth wherever I go there is God's throne wherever I'm standing heaven is always up and higher no matter where I am heaven is up and higher so it's not looking up because then these people must be looking down so it must be in another realm so uh, God gave to Abram the promise of two seeds but only recognizing one your seed shall be like the stars of heaven Stars being a sun. Is that right? If we look into our galaxies, a star is a sun, which is a ball of fire, which is energy, which is light. Okay? Then God said to Abram after he made a human plan by going into his maidservant's house because of his wife's advice, God said, now your seed shall also be like the sand of the seashore. Let's call it earth, which is dust, which is of a much lower degree than stars. Okay? No light. So the Bible came in Deuteronomy 1 when the children of Israel left the house of Egypt. Deuteronomy 1 verse 10, God said, all Israel is now stars. Deuteronomy 28 verse 62, God says, if you disobey, you will be not like stars anymore. Then God goes on and he says to Jacob, to Abram and Isaac I said, your seed shall be like the stars of heaven. But then God said to Jacob, after he wrestled with God, and he said, truly God is in this place. And he called the place Bethel, remember? God said, Jacob, your seed shall all be the sand of the sea. Okay. So uh, in Romans chapter 6, chapter 9, verse 27, God says, all Israel is now sand. In other words, God had a natural seed on earth. God had a spiritual seed on earth. Israel, natural, the church, the spiritual seed. So Israel was just examples. The church is the true people of God. Ephesians chapter 5. For you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather to prove them. Listen to the Amplified Bible. Take no part and have no fellowship with the fruitless deeds and enterprises of darkness, but instead let your lives be so in contrast as to expose and reprove them. Okay, so it says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather to reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. 
Darkness and light is truly a contrast. The one is black and the one is white, all right? So if I am in a dark place, I can't see my hand. If I bring light in there and I shine it on my hand, the first thing is I'll see, I'll see five fingers, all right? So the Bible says, if there's darkness, and he's talking about the wicked works of this evil age, because the previous talk talks about the evil stuff that they do, that the Satanists do, the Songomas do, the fortune tellers do, the witchcraft people do. He says, but we must have no fellowship with that works of darkness. But we must rather reprove it. So he says, we must live in contrast with that works, that when they see our works, it must convict and convince them that they are wrong and they must turn to the light. It says, for whatever is reproved, in every, whatever is shown wrong by the light will become light. In other words, if I walk into a place of darkness, it must become light because I enter that place. Okay? But People have this idea that we must write books about darkness. We must, you know, have organizations that talks about darkness. And we must reveal darkness to the church. And we must show them what darkness is doing. The Bible says it's a shame to talk about the things of darkness. So we're not supposed to talk about what they are doing in darkness. We are supposed to reprove them. In other words, we're supposed to live a life that will intimidate, dominate, and truly drive out darkness. Darkness drive out light. If I switch on a light, it normally becomes light in the room where I switch on the light. Okay? So we're not supposed to have fellowship with darkness. We're not supposed to talk about the stuff of darkness. We're not supposed to go to the places of darkness. We're not supposed to, you know, let everybody know that that is a place of darkness. We must just pass that place and either rebuke it, says the one translation, others I must say, I command this place to close. If I speak light into that place, light must gather there so that place must close. Or I walk into that place and I say, Jesus loves you. So I drive out darkness and within a few weeks, that place is closed. See, we've got a responsibility to understand we are the light and we must get rid of darkness. Not by talking about darkness, but getting rid of darkness by shining our light. Wherefore he saith, verse 14, Awake, you that sleep, and rise from the dead. And Christ shall give you light. Okay, is he talking to sinners or is he busy talking to the church? I want to help you. He says, you that were once darkness, that are now the light. You who are seated, chapter 2, in heavenly places. You in chapter 1 who are chosen in the beloved. Who, you who are forgiven all your sins by grace. You who are saved by faith. You who are a super duper GLXLVT Christian. You who is above. You must awake. The church, not the world. Okay, you must awake. And arise out of bed. Okay? And Christ, where are we? So that Christ shall give you light. It's also in Romans 13. Okay? See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Okay? So I must awake, I must arise, and then I must redeem my time. Because the days... Not the nights, the days. So God is talking about when we are up and going. Things around us are a little bit evil. Everything is not kosher, okay? The days are evil. We can talk about the night, but that's the Bible says we don't talk about the stuff that they do in the night. But in daytime... We who are saved, blood washed, redeemed, seated in heavenly places, elected in the beloved, chosen in Christ, far above all, you know, we must awake from the dead. We must arise because Christ wants to shine. Then we must buy out time because the days that, okay, you don't sleep in daytime. So you must awake because it's already daytime. The night is already spent, the day is here, says Romans chapter 13, talking about the same thing. It says, 
Wherefore you must not be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine. Now Romans would say that is what they do in the night time. Wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Okay, we are supposed to be the stars of heaven. The sand of the sea is the natural seed, the people that's missing God. The stars are the people that's living in the divine plan of God. They are full of fire. They are full of energy. They are full of the light of God. Light is energy that comes from fire. Hmm? So awake, arise. The days are evil. Buy out your time to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now we talked about heaven that is higher, earth that is lower. We are seated in heavenly places and stuff like that. So in Revelation chapter 4, God said to John, come up higher. Where must the church come up higher? This is what John saw. Now this is just a recap of the last couple of meetings. John saw seven lampstands. Okay, is that true? Then there was the door. This was outside. And this was inside the veil. Inside there was the throne of God. Round about the throne he saw seven lamps. Okay. Which were the seven spirits of God. So God said, John, get the church to come up higher because I want the lamps on the lampstands. I want the church to be ablaze with fire. So church of Jesus Christ, that is what God said. So when it comes to the light of God, the light of God is God's power, is God's energy. When God, when the earth was created and was void and without form and empty and there was nothing going on, the first thing that God said is, let there be light. So what God wanted, he wanted his life-giving energy to be on this thing that we call earth. Amen. And out of this light energy, because the sun was only created on day four. So out of this light energy of God on the face of the earth, which is nothing less than Christ himself being on the face of the earth, God started creating, God started speaking, God started operating, and things started happening. When Jesus Christ walked on the face of the earth, he said, I can only, wo I can only work as long as it is daytime. The night will come when no one can work. Okay, talking about the crucifixion. When Jesus came to the blind man, he says, uh, the works of God must be manifested in him. I am the light of the world. When Jesus was on the way to Lazarus' tomb, he said, I must work while the light is shining. I am the light of the world. He that follows me will not walk in darkness, but then he goes on in the context, but will do the works that I do. So the works of God is bringing light into darkness. If somebody is sick, he's in darkness. If I bring healing, I bring light. Light in darkness make miracle power operating. So the power of God, the light of God, the sun of God, the stars of God is all synonyms for the power of God needs to be revealed and manifested. This is what God is saying to the church. Church, awake. It's time to show my power. Okay? So how must we awake? We must awake and shine our light. For if we sleep, we're in darkness. If we're awake, it's daytime. So God says, come out of a night type of living. Come out of hiding. Come out of the closet. Come out of your room. Come out from behind closed doors. Come out from behind the veil. Get into a place where you can shine your light, where people can see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Church, it's time to awake, arise, and do the good works of our Father. So there's going to be two awakenings that we're going to talk about. When God spoke to Moses on the mountain, and we did that last Saturday night, God said to Moses, come up on the mountain. We heard that was on the third day as well as on the seventh day. Amen. God said, tell the people on the third day, 
I will come down on the mountain. But God says the cloud was for six days, and on the seventh day, Moses went up on the mountain. So God said, if you go up on the mountain with the glory, the fire was burning on the mountain, God said, I will come down on the mountain. So I got to go higher, and God will come lower. So the Son of God became the Son of Man. So that sons of men can be the sons of God. So God said, I came out of the realm of heaven. I stepped out of this higher life and I walked here where you could see the lower life operating the higher life. So while you're still here, you don't have to live a lower life. You can step into another realm and live a higher life. Okay. So this is what Jesus came to do, to give you that godly, divine, light life of Almighty God. You are the light of the world. You are a city on a hill. You cannot be hidden. So God says, let's meet some, let's meet somewhere. You come down, up and I come down, all right? In Mark chapter 16, Jesus says, he that believeth and is baptized, I know we tried to reason it away because of our forefathers and our heritage, but uh, let's, not, let's not reason it away, let's do it. Okay, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. So the baptized ones, the, if you're not baptized, you're not damned. But you're not fully saved either. You may be ready to die and go to heaven, but there's some stuff on earth that maybe you will not have, okay? So he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. But he that believeth to him these signs shall follow. Okay, believe what? In my name. Then he says, you can cast out devils. Out devil. (laughs) You can talk in tongues. You can heal the sick. You can drink poison. I don't advise that you go and drink this stuff. But I mean, if if you are in a mission field and somebody gives you poison, it shall not do anything to you, no? You shall take up serpents, it shall not harm you. It doesn't say go play around with adders. It means if a serpent does bite you, it's not supposed to harm you. Remember in Acts chapter 28, when... uh, when Paul was there and he picked up, you know, sticks to throw in the fire and this deadly viper bit on his hand and he threw it in the, in the fire and they all waited for, for Paul to die and when he didn't die, they thought it was a god. Mm-hmm. Serpents don't harm you, okay? Devils are also serpents, okay? He says, and they went about preaching the word, God worked with them. That's a good word for the grace people. That's us. We are the grace people. But God worked. Jesus says, my father worked until now and I work also. God worked (laughs) with them. In other words, they worked. Remember when Paul said to Barnabas, I don't want Mark to go with us because he don't want to work. The Bible says, he that does not work shall not eat. Remember, the Bible says, Paul, there was bitterness between him and Barnabas because he didn't want to take Mark, Luke with, uh, Mark John with him because he didn't want to work. There's no lazy bums in the church. God worked with him and God confirmed the word. With signs, wonders, miracles, spirit word ministry. I mean, signs, wonders, miracles. <laughs> I just like it. Okay. Okay, this man is crying. If that was sand, the man would be buried. If that was water, he would be baptized. Because the Bible said, we are buried with him in baptism. So uh, with that, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. Maybe get a revelation that you never had in all your life. 
Say, here comes the revelation. So I'm ready to hear, and so is the whole world. No opposition against this word. Verse 29. What shall they do which are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? Okay, anybody with a revelation on that scripture? If the dead are not raised, why are people baptized for the dead? Okay. I'll help you. In, in the book of Acts, Paul is now preaching, especially from chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 to 28. Paul is preaching, Paul is preaching, Paul is preaching, Paul is preaching. What is his preaching mostly about? The resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Amen. When it comes to Corinthians, the crucified Christ. When it comes to Galatians, the crucified Christ. Okay, when it comes to Acts, the resurrected Christ. So Paul is preaching resurrection. Why was he so much preaching about resurrection in Acts? Because there were so many Pharisees and Sadducees present. Okay, so now Paul is preaching about the resurrection from the dead. The one minute he rebukes the sorcerer, say to him, you'll be blind. The people say, wow, man, this is like the gods are coming down. Paul is with power. And then, you know, and then Paul, you know, he's in prison and he and Silas sings that the prison doors opens, you know, and oh man, then they, oh, you know, and then they want to crucify them again. You know, the one minute they want to crown them there. And when they heard Paul preaching about the resurrection, they took him outside Lystra and stoned him till he was dead. And Paul stood up after the disciples encircled him and he just walked away and preached. Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, 3, as well as verse 10, I'm an apostle to preach about life and to preach about immortality. Immortality means I can't die. Life means I can live and live again afterwards. Life means I can live now and live year after. Immortality means I can live and not die. So Paul says I'm a preacher of both. I preach life and immortality. Philippians chapter 3, Paul comes and he says, God grabbed me for something. He says, now I'm grabbing to get that. Not that I have yet attained that. But I'm going to keep on grabbing out. And if I don't get it, I'm still going to say, I've finished my course, I've run my race, and now I'm still going to get the crown of life. So what is Paul saying? He says, I'm grabbing for immortality. Because Romans, Paul is writing Romans, verse two, chapter 2, verse 7, he says, we must seek life and we must seek immortality. And if we do seek it, God will give us both eternal life. In other words, the people that seek life will get eternal life. The people that seek immortality will automatically have eternal life. You understand? So Paul says, I'm grabbing for that for which I was grabbed, to live and not die. But if I don't attain to it right now, it's not that I've missed anything. It's just that there will be a generation that will step into it because I show you a mystery. We shall not all die, 1 Corinthians 13. So there must be a group that will attain to it. Paul says, if we're not the group, somewhere in the future there will be a group. So seek life and seek immortality. So Paul says, if the dead are not raised, why are we baptized for the dead? I'll read it to you and see if you get it before I explain it. Why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Stop. 
Paul says, there's stuff that's happening in the church. You're looking at me. Some are feeling sorry for me. He says, I die daily. Is he talking about taking up your cross and follow Jesus? Is he talking about I'm dying to the self-life daily? I'm dying to Paul daily so that I can become like Christ? I'm dying to all my appetites. I'm dying to my fleshly desires. I'm dying. Is this what Paul is saying? I'm going to say it, then I'm going to read it to you. Paul says, I am baptized for the dead because I believe in the resurrection of the dead. Otherwise, why do we get baptized? So he says, so you people look at me and you feel sorry for me, but I want to tell you, I die daily. Paul was referring to physical, real, experiential death. I'll read it to you. He says, If after the manner of men, take note, I have fought with the beast at Ephesus. Can I take you to Ephesus? There's an amphitheater. There's gladiators at the bottom. The Romans are sitting in the amphitheater. And they are waiting for the people. They bring them in one after the other. And then they say, open the lions. Then the lions comes in and the people have to fight the lions and the people sit and watch them as they die. Paul says, if this is not true, why do I have after a manner of men have to fight the beast at Ephesus? He says, I baptized myself for the dead. So if they kill me, I just walk out again. They kill me again, I walk. I die daily. They stoned me. They gave me to the wild beast. They put me in the deep sea. They gave me three times 39 light stretched. He says, but that stuff doesn't move me. For the time of my departure was not yet. Listen, what advantage is it for me if the dead rise not? Let us then eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Paul says, I'm grabbing for that which Christ grabbed me for. Christ came to give us life. Christ conquered death. He made it of no effect. Hebrews chapter 2. But why has it still got an effect? Because Romans says, how can they believe in something if it's not preached? How can they preach it if they're not sent? How can they hear if there's no preacher? So for years, this was the message in the church. If you die tonight, are you ready to meet your maker? And the message is not death. The message is if you want Jesus tonight, you can live. Jesus didn't come that we might preach a message of death. Jesus come that we might preach a message of life. So the invitation is not, excuse me evangelists, the message is not if you die tonight. It's not scriptural, it's religious. The message is if you want eternal life, make Jesus Lord. So Paul says, I'm here to preach life and immortality. I'm grabbing for it, not saying I will get it. But I still have the revelation, and I'm giving you this mystery, that we shall not all die. There's going to come a time where people will step out of mortality into immortality. There will be a group that will get this. He says, if it's not true that the dead are raised, Why are we baptized for the dead? Why don't we just go and drink, eat, tomorrow we just die? Why don't we just die? Remember 1 Peter 3 verse 21 says, Wherewith we are saved by baptism, not from sin, but to a prayer for a clear conscience. Okay, First Peter 3, 20. In other words, my baptism, which is dying, rising up to prove that if I die, I can rise up. Okay. So why am I baptized? Not why am I sprinkled? 
because they're not going to shoot you with a hail gun. There's plenty other ways. Okay, so if I'm baptized and I rise again into newness of life, so if I die, I will rise again. And if they throw me to the lions, I'm going to rise. If they stone me, I'm going to rise. If they throw me in the sea, I'm going to rise. But if I don't make immortality, the mystery is still that we shall not all die. So, so I'm getting baptized to have my conscience clear. So if my conscience is clear, I'm not guilty. If I'm not guilty, I'm not condemned. If I'm not condemned, it means I didn't take judgment. If I don't take judgment, it means I'm free. Free from the law of sin and death. Have no fellowship with the evil works of darkness, but reprove them for whatever is reproved of of light. You know, whatever is reproved by light becomes light. You know, because you were darkness, now are you light. But it's time for you to awake. It's time for you to shine your light. Be not deceived. Evil communications, we're just reading on. Verse 33, amplified. Do not be deceived and misled. Evil companionships. Evil communion. Evil associations. Corrupt and depraved good manners and morals and character. Awake! Awake! Listen, listen, listen. King James, awake to righteousness. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But some man will say, how are the dead raised and with what body do they come? You fool, that which you sow is not quickened except to die. Verse 45, as it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last man, Adam, a quickening spirit. Now, we remember, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, Romans 8, 11, dwells in us, he will quicken our mortal bodies. Yes. How about that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. Afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man, the natural man, is of the earth, and he is earthy. Amen. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, so are they that are earthy. As is the heavenly, so are they that are heavenly. As we are born the image of the earthy, we shall bear the image of the heavenly. Verse 53, for this corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. Okay, so two groups for those who were here when we preached a lot on immortality. Corruption is people that did die. They will be raised and put on incorruption. But those that are mortal will be quickened and put on immortality. So we shall not all die. The group that died got corrupted. They will put on incorruption. The group that live don't have to die. They can go from mortal to immortal. Because the same spirit that raised him will quicken my mortal. So if the spirit quickens the mortal, it becomes immortal. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, this mortal have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where's your sting? O grave, where's your victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. There's a lot to say about that. Verse 57, but thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have to wait to see when this happened. Because thanks be to God who gives us the victory. We can take the victory like Paul took it, even if it wasn't for his time and generation. He says, if we are not baptized for the dead, and the dead raise not, why are we baptized for the dead? He says, don't look at me like that. He says, I die daily. I just came out of a stoning at Lystra, I just came out of the wild beast at Ephesus. I just fought all the lions and walked out. No quibbles. Did Daniel stay in the lion's den? Did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego go into the furnace? Thank you. Did Lazarus come out? 
Did the widow's son of Nain walk out? Did the little girl raise up Jairus' daughter? Oh, verse 34 again, before we go to Psalm 78. Awake to righteousness. How do I awake to righteousness? Easy. The righteousness which is of faith speaks. It says, do not say, who will go and get Christ from the dead? It says, do not say, who shall bring Christ down from heaven? But it does say, the word is now in you. In your heart and in your mouth, you can now speak the word. So awake to righteousness. Romans 10. Righteousness of faith speaks. It says the word is in you. Quoted from Deuteronomy 30. That says, I give you the words of death and I give you the words of life. Speak life. So that you may live and not die. Quoted from Deuteronomy 30 by Paul, he says, Awake to righteousness. The righteousness of faith speaks. It says you don't have to struggle with the death thing. You don't have to struggle with the heaven thing. The only thing you need to do is speak the words of life. Quoting, I've brought you life and death. Speak life so that you can live. Oh, I'm so stressed up, I can die. You are stressed till you die. Give us opportunity to live. I'm so frightened, I feel I'm dying. Well, get frightened and die. Give us a chance to live. Give us more breathing space. If you want to go, go. We want to stay. Okay? What would you say to yourself? What is coming out of your life? Is it words of life? I hear people taking the message of immortality. And then they, they speak. You see? Well, we know we must all die someday. I see. How can you say that? I thought you believe in what we preach. You know? Well, death is part of life. How can death be part of life? It's two opposites. Well, it's appointed unto man to die. Oh, no, that's talking about Jesus taking the price for sin in Hebrews 9 verse 28. Oh, but the wages of sin is death. Oh, yes, but the gift of God is eternal life. So which side of the coin do you want to live in? So God is bringing a generation forth that will awake to righteousness and keep on speaking what God says and what God alone says. And don't mix your language with the old and the new because the, somebody who the, the, hears the new doesn't immediately reject the old because it says the old is more comfortable. Why don't we get out of the old, walk into newness of life and say, my goodness, I'm going to redeem the time. I'm going to wake out of death. I'm going to let Christ rise in me. I'm going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so uh, we got that hint there in the beginning. We got to be staying full of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 5, Paul is talking to, I don't like that inverted thing that people do it all the time because most of the time I don't like that saying, but you know, but you know, uh, but Paul is saying, church, why are you dead? Paul is actually saying to the Ephesian church, You were elected in the beloved. You were chosen in the beloved. You were seated with Christ in heavenly places. You were forgiven all your sins. You were saved by faith, by grace. It's not of yourself. You are all these good things. But you did. Talking to the church. Please, awake. Be filled with the Spirit. The days are evil. You can arise. 
When God gave the promise to Israel, he said they'll all be stars. And then at a time, he called them all stars. Then he gave the promise, but they'll all be sand. Now Paul says, they are now sand. Now he comes to the church in Revelation, and he says, but I want to tell you, if you overcome, the morning star will rise in your heart. 2 Peter 1 verse 19 says, the day star will rise in your heart. So he comes and says, God's people are now the stars of heaven. In other words, we are the light of this world. We are the light to shine and bring, you know, comfort and healing and deliverance and whatever we are supposed to bring it. Okay, so what we talked about a lot lately is the children of Israel, we started right before Christmas, in their most disobedient, rebellious, stubborn times. Whenever they called, God answered, because he called them my people. But then God gave the promise, but there will be a time when I will call those people that were not my people. And those that were my people will not be my people. So there came a time when Israel rejected Jesus. And God says, now every tongue, every tribe, every nation. God so loved the world. God reconciled the world. So that now... From every nation, from every tribe, whoever believes shall be saved. So this is now for all people of all nations, of all tribes. Okay? So if they in their stubbornness with the law cry to God and God answered, how much more we who live by grace? If we have failed, if they failed under the law and cried and God answered, how much more will God answer now that we are in grace? Right? But people want to mix the two and live under condemnation. So Psalm 78 tonight. Remember, say, I'm awaking to power tonight. Give ear, O my people, to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. He says, what we have heard we will say. Verse 4, we will not hide them from the children. Showing the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works. Amplified says, the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord and his might. Amen. And his wonderful works that he has performed. Proverbs 6.22 says, my son, attend to my words. He says, because if you go to bed, it will watch over you. If you sleep, it will do this to you. But if you awake, that is what will teach and guide and talk to you. Okay? So the word will always work. But if you awake, that's when the word will talk to you. That's when the word will guide you. That's when the word will teach you. Okay? So you got to awake to this word. Okay? Let's just go on. It says, he established a testimony. Verse 6, so that the generation to come might know them so that the children still to be born might arise and recount them to their children so that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God so that they might not be as their fathers a stubborn and rebellious generation a generation that set not their hearts right nor prepare their hearts to know God, in whose spirits were not steadfast, and they were not faithful to God. Okay? I'm talking about the stars of heaven that were disobedient and eventually became the sand. God said, but this, this group of people knew my wonders. They knew my power. They must tell the works. So right through this Bible, they kept on writing about the wonders. Every now and then God raised up either a priest or a prophet or a king or just some writer that wrote about what happened. And every time they referred back to when they came out of Egypt, back to it, because that's the wonders. So they kept on referring back to those wonders, back to those signs, back to those powers. Okay, they kept on referring back to them, kept on, because God said it must be written down from generation to generation because there will be an unborn generation one day that'll say, my God, I'm going to awake to the power and I'm not going to be stubborn. I'm not going to be rebellious. I'm going to take the word. I'm going to take the wonders. I'm going to take the signs. If nobody goes for it, me, 
Quibbits from Rainsburg, I'm gonna go for it. And I'm gonna get crutches taken away from people. I'm gonna get people out of wheelchairs. I'm gonna get dead people raised. I'm gonna get sinners saved. And if you don't want it, sucker, suck your thumb. If you want to die in your wickedness, die in your wickedness. If you want to live in darkness, live in darkness. If you want to be wicked and draw people's attention away, you're wicked. But if you want to be full of power, I'm going to wait for power. Sorry if I'm a bit hard, but please, I, I've got a word. Somebody's got to awake for power. The church, Paul says, you're dead. Church, it's time to awake and be filled with the Spirit because the, the world out there needs to see the power of the Almighty God. Okay? Okay, Psalm 7, 8. Let's read on. He says, verse 14, in the daytime, he led them with a pillar and a cloud all the night with a light of fire. He split the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as out of the deep. He brought streams out of the rock. He caused waters to down, run down like rivers. Yet they still went on to sin. Verse 19, they spoke against God. They said, can God set a table in the wilderness? Hmm? Behold, he smit the rock so that waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. But he gave them bread. Hmm? Verse 23, yet he commanded the clouds above to open the doors of heaven. He rained down upon them manna to eat and gave them heaven's rain. Everyone ate the bread of the mighty angel's food. God sent them meat in abundance. He let forth the east wind to blow in the heavens. And by his power, he guided the south wind. Everybody said he commanded the wind to blow. I, I tell you, I know there's people that want revival with me. I want revival. I want the power of God. Tell his power. So that people yet unborn. In other words, in those days, this generation was not thought of. So that there will be a people one day that will go for it. He says, look at these people. They were rebellious they were rebels. They were stubborn. Okay? They were evil. Yet, God Amen. gave miracle upon miracle upon miracle. Okay? He sent the wind. By his power, his wind blew. And wham, miracles, 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 miracles. Verse 27, he rained flesh also upon them like the dust, winged birds like the sand of the seas, and he let fall in the midst of their camp round about their tents, so they ate and they were filled. He gave them what they craved for, lust for. Verse 32, in spite of all this, they sinned still more, for they believed not in his wondrous works. Verse 35, then they remembered that he was their rock, the most high. Nevertheless, they flattered him with their mouths and lied to him with their tongues. Their hearts were not right, but he, full of compassion. <laughs> this was under the law. This was not in time of grace. Under the law, they lied to him. Did you think God, do you think God knew they lied? Hey, we bless you, Lord. We praise you, he said. You liars, but because I'm merciful and you praise me, I'm going to bless you. Just because I'm merciful and you praise me and call upon me, I know you're lying, but because you call, I'm going to bless you. Verse 41, and time again, they turned back and tempted God. Verse 42, they remembered not the miracles of his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. How he wrought his miracles with Pharaoh. Then the rest of the chapter there, it's about verse 51, talks about how he took them out of Egypt, the miracle upon miracle. Verse 52. But God led his own people forth like sheep. He guided them like a flock in the wilderness. He led them on safely and in confident trust so that they feared not. 
but so that they feared not, but the sea overwhelmed the enemies. He brought them to his holy border, the border of his sanctuary, even to Mount Zion, which his right hand had acquired. Later on, we talk about that. Verse 56. Yet they tempted and provoked him. Verse 57. They turned back and dealt unfaithfully. Verse 58. They provoked him to jealousy. Hmm? Verse 60. So that at the end, listen, God forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, which means Christ, anointed. The tent in which he had dwelt amongst men. Never to return to it again. And delivered his strength and his power, the ark of the covenant, into captivity, into the hands of the Philistines. He gave his people over to the sword and it was wrath. And was wrath to his enemies. Verse 65. Then the Lord awakened as from sleep. As a strong man whose consciousness of power is heightened by wine. And he smote his adversaries in the back. He put them to lasting shame and reproach. Moreover, he rejected the tent of Joseph. Chose not the tribe of Ephraim in which the tabernacle had been accustomed to stand. But he chose the tribe of Judah. Mount Zion, which he loved, to replace Shiloh as his capital. And he built his sanctuary like the heights of heaven and like the earth which he established forever. Okay, the people of Israel who were the stars. When he took them out, they had a tabernacle with the Ark of the Covenant. This was the visible presence of Almighty God. And this was how he dwelt with them, and remember, and walked with them. So what he said to Moses, build me a tabernacle that I can walk with them. But we know in the New Testament, God does not dwell in temples made with hands, but God dwells on the inside of us. The ark of the testimony was taken away. And he said it to you last week, when, when uh, uh, Solomon's temple was built, the ark had no more gold and it had no more cherubims on it. It had no more pot of manna, no more staff of Aaron that budded. It only had the law. When Herod rebuilt the temple before Christ, there was no ark in the Holy of Holies. Okay? So it was not a real temple. It was a gimmick. So God says, because of this continuous stubbornness, rebelliousness of the house of Israel, God says, I'm going to destroy my dwelling with them. And never return. But then God awakened. God the Almighty awakened and slew his enemies. Are you there? He rejected the tent of Joseph's tribe order, and he chose Judah. Okay? Does that mean still God still, God still got a tribe on earth? No. Hebrew says, Our Lord Jesus. is from Judah. Which the law has nothing to say about. Thank you. And this is our high priest. Who is now in a tabernacle not made with hands, but in heaven itself. Okay, so he says, and I will build my sanctuary like the heights of heaven and like the earth which is established forever. Heaven is now my throne and earth is now my footstool. So I've got no permanent dwelling place. I have no temple in Jerusalem. I have no tabernacle in Israel. I have no dwelling place in Jericho. I have no place in Israel where I will live. I now live where people want to take me into their lives because 
the rebellious, stubborn people who were my people. I rejected them as stars. They became the sand. Now I've chosen another people and say, you can now be the stars of heaven. You can now be baptized for the dead, rise in a new life, sit with me in heavenly places, and actually have the power of God to walk upon this face of the earth, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, call to God, and see the miraculous power of God manifest in your life. And I hope somebody will see what we're trying to say here tonight. And this is the word of Almighty God. God is about to break through for us supernatural stuff. Let's go to the book of Judges. Remember he says in Psalm 78, he sent for the wind. And by his power, he started raising stuff and started miracles to happen. Go get my bottle of anointing or my big bottle. How many like the anointing meetings? Amen. How many like the anointing? Full stop. Amen. How many know it's because of the anointing that the yoke shall be destroyed? Amen. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord goes upon me for he has anointed me to bring the good news. Yeah. Okay, there's my big anointing bottle. So what's in there is spikenard, saffron, calamus, cinnamon, frankincense, myrrh, aloes, you know, all types of spices that's in the Bible, every single one that you can name is in this bottle. So if you open it and smell it, it's got a little tap there, but if you open it and smell it, like, ah, it's like you can't make it, you know? It's like awesome, but it's all in here. Calamus, aloes, frankincense, spikenard, myrrh, it's all in there, which represents the anointing of the Almighty God. Verse 14, Song of Solomon 4. Spikenard, saffron, calamus, cinnamon, frankincense, myrrh, aloes, all the chief spices. You are a fountain in a garden. You are a well of living waters. You are flowing streams. Oh, I pray that the north wind and the south wind may blow upon my garden, that the spices, this anointing aromas, may flow out in abundance for you in whom my soul delights. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat his choices of fruit. He says, when all these people were so rebellious, stubborn, hard-headed, stiff-necked, and they rebelled against God and God every time. Yet, because every time they cried, he decided, let me help them. Let me help. He said, this is how I help them. I send my north and my south wind. And when my wind blow, bam, miracles started happening, man. Meat started falling from heaven. So Song of Solomon says, there's the aloes, the calamus, the frankincense, the spikenard. He said, all this stuff is like a well. It's like a stream. Now we know wells of living water, streams of living water, supposed to flow from our enemies. He says, now this is what I want to say. Let the north wind and the south wind blow so that all these fragrances will spread in God's garden. So what is he saying? He says in Ezekiel 37, look at the dead bones. Oh. Church, you are accepted in the beloved. You were raised with Christ, seated with Christ in heavenly places, saved by faith through grace. But because you are dead, I want you to awake. I want Christ to shine on you, and I want you to redeem the time and be filled with the Holy Spirit so that you can, for a change, prove what the will of God is. Oh, God, let your wind blow. Because in that time, the north wind, the south wind blew in miracles. Let the wind blow from the north and the south and let the fragrance of the anointing increase. So if the wind blow and the wells spring up and the streams spring up, man, the anointing will spread all over. People will know the calamus and the aloes and the frankincense and the myrrh. So let the wind blow. Ezekiel, can these dead bones live? Lord, you know, then prophesy over the wind and say, wind, blow. And when the wind blow, a revival came. Yeah. 
So awake north wind, awake south wind. Awake wind of God and blow. On the way to, to Judges, let's stop at Isaiah 51. Verse 9 of chapter 51 of Isaiah. O Zion, cried to the Lord, Awake, awake, put on strength and might, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in the ancient days, as in the generations of long ago. Was it not you who cut Rahab, Egypt, in pieces, who pierced the dragon, symbol of Egypt? Was it not you who dried up the Red Sea, the waters of the great deep, who made the depths of the sea away for the redeemed to pass over? Why then are we left so long in captivity? The Lord God says, and the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing to Zion. Everlasting joy shall be upon the heads of the redeemed. They shall obtain gladness. Joy, sorrow, and sighing shall flee away. Mm. Chapter 52. Awake, awake. Put on strength, O Zion. First awake, O Lord, and put on strength. Now Zion awake and put on beautiful garments. Shake yourself loose from the dust. Come out of the sandy people. Arise and sit down. Lose yourself from the bonds of your neck. In other words, get anointed. Whoo. Verse 7, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him. Now from verse 7 to verse 10, we can read in Romans chapter 10. So it's New Testament. Depart, depart, go out from them. Touch not the unclean thing. Is that what we read in 1 Corinthians 15? Is that what we read in Ephesians 5? Go out of the midst, be ye clean, that bear the vessels of the Lord. So if we clean ourselves from all these things, we shall be vessels of honor, 2 Timothy 2. We shall be equipped unto every good work. We shall be fit for the master's use. Wow. 2 Corinthians 4. God has put in vessels this light of glory. To show his power. So you that are the vessels of the Lord, come out from amongst them. What does it say? Come out from dust. Come out from sand. Don't mix with, don't mix with natural Israel. Don't mix with the Jews. Don't mix with the world. Don't mix with sinners. They are antichrist. They rejected Christ. They crucified him. Mix with people that know the Lord, that worship God. Don't go and sit next to a rabbi and break bread with him on a Friday night. We don't break the same bread. They break the bread of Moses. We break the body of Christ. We eat from the crucifixion. They eat from Egypt. They eat in bondage. We eat in liberty. They are sand of the sea. We are stars of heaven. We have no fellowship one with another. Come out from amongst them. Be ye separate. Rise. Awake up. So arm of the Lord, awake. Clothe yourself with strength. Arise, church of Jesus Christ. Come out from the dust. Sit in a dignified place. In other words, go sit in your heavenly place. Take your place of authority and rulership. Be the person that God intended you to be. And what will then happen? Power. We discussed the stars, the sand, the two seeds. The one is the blessed ones. The ones are the cursed ones. The ones that were blessed are not blessed anymore. Okay, they may look blessed, but they're not blessed, brother. Okay, God says, and we must rise and we must awake to righteousness. Chapter 3 of Judges, verse 5. And the Israelites dwell among the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Parasites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. Listen to what Israel did. They married their daughters and gave their own daughters to their sons, and they served their gods. The Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord and forgot the Lord God and served Baal and Astartes. Verse 9. But when the Israelites cried to God... The Lord raised up a deliverer to deliver Israel. <laughs> what a God. Verse 12. And then the Israelites did evil. And the Lord strengthened Eglon, king of Moab, against Israel. And the Israelites served Eglon, king of Moab, eight year, 18 years. But when the Israelites cried to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer. Ehud, son of Gera. 
Verse 16, Ehud made himself a sword. Okay, now, I don't want to talk about this, but then he went to the king of Eglon who was very fat. It says it there in the Bible. This guy was so fat that when Ehud took his sword and pushed it into this guy's stomach, even the, the, the portion that held the sword, even that went into the guy's stomach because the fat fell over it. He says, and he couldn't pull out his sword and dirt started running out of the man. Is there in the Bible? Okay. So Ehud delivered the children of Israel who were very rebellious and said, huh? Verse 22, I'll just read you the last portion. And the hilt also went in after the blade, and the fat closed upon the blade. For he who did not draw the sword out of his belly, and dirt came out. You think I'm joking? That's fat, man. Okay, verse 26, don't miss the message. And he who escaped, verse 27, when he arrived, he blew the trumpet. And the Israelites were down with him, and he said to them, Follow me, for the Lord has delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into your hands. They slew at that time 10,000 Moabites, all strong, courageous men, not a man escaped. After Ehud was Shamgar, son of Anath, who slew 600 Philistine men with an ox goat, he also delivered Israel. But after Ehud died, the Israelites again did evil in the sight of the Lord. I want you to see this man. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazar. The commander of his army was Sisera. Okay, listen to this. I, I, I'm not going to read it all. Then there was this prophetess by the name of Deborah. And then God raised her up to judge Israel and to lead them into greater victory. Okay? But every time... They sinned against God, and every time he raised up someone to deliver them when they cried, then they sinned against God, then he raised up another heathen king to, to, to intimidate them, dominate them, kill them. Then, he would, then they would cry, and then God would send the judge to deliver them. And then they would just sin again and do evil, and then God, and they would cry, and God would send a deliverer. Yeah. Chapter 4, okay. And verse 9, and she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the trip you take will not be your, for your glory. For the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Verse 13, Sisera gathered together all the chariots, 900 chariots of iron. And Deborah said to Barak, up, awake, arise. For this is the day when the Lord has given Sisera into your hand. Is not the Lord gone out before you? So Barak went from Mount Tabor, 10,000 men following him. And the Lord confused and terrified Sisera and his chariots. Okay? And Sisera fled, verse 17, to the tent of Jehel, the wife of Heber, who was also a Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin, the king of Hazar, and the house of Heber, the Kenite. All heathen people, nothing to do with Israel. And Jehel went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Turn aside, my Lord, turn aside to me. Have no fear. So he turned aside to her and went into the tent, and she covered him with a rug. And he said to her, Give me a little water. And he said to her, Stand at the door of the tent. If any man comes and asks you, Is there a man here? Tell him no. But Jael, Heber's wife, took a tent pin and, hammered it, and a hammer in her hand and went softly to him and drove the pin through his temple into the ground. He couldn't get up again. For he was in a deep sleep from weariness. <laughs> I mean, here's this creep lying. Here comes this woman, put the pig here on the side. It's right through. Imagine that. I can't get up. I can't get up. Now. So he died. There's a good story. Just keep listening with me. And behold... As Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him and said to him, Come, I will show you the man you seek. When he came into her tent, behold, Sisera lay dead, and the tent pen was in his temples. So God subdued on that day Jabin, king of Canaan, before the Israelites. And the hand of the Israelites bore more and more upon Jabin, king of Canaan, until they had destroyed him. Then sang Deborah and Barak, son of Abinoah, on the day singing, The leaders who took the lead of Israel, for the people who offered themselves willingly, bless the Lord. Okay. <laughs> Too much. Okay. When this guy got killed, the enemies died. And now, now you must know, God helped. They sinned. 
enemy came, they cried, God helped. They sinned, God sent enemy, they cried, God help. They sinned, God sent enemy, they cried, God help. Until this woman came around and she said, I think we need to sing a little. I think we need to sing the praises because God's people are willing again. Why were the people willing? Because they saw the power of God in operation from people that were prepared to trust God. So Psalm 110 says, the people shall be willing in the day of God's power. So the more we see God's power, the more people will be willing to serve God, worship God, and go out and do for God. So the church need to awake to power because the more people see power, the more people will be willing. So the Bora said, we got to sing the praises because people are getting willing. Why were they getting willing? Because they saw the power of God in action. They saw the power of God. Verse 5, the mountains quaked at the presence of the Lord. Sinai at the presence of the Lord God of Israel. Verse 7, the villages were occupied and rulers ceased in Israel until you arose, you, Deborah, arose, a mother in Israel. They choose new gods, then war was in the gates. Was there a shield or a spear in amongst 40,000 Israel? My heart goes out to the commanders of Israel who offered themselves willingly among this people. Bless the Lord. Okay. 40,000 people willingly started praising God because of a woman that were prepared to stand up for the power and praise God for His power. And when the power were released, bam, bam, 40,000 people started getting willingly to serve God. Listen to verse 10. Tell of it, you ride on white donkeys. You sit on rich carpets. You walk by the way. Far from the noise of archers. In other words, no war weapons. In the places of drawing water, spirit. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. Awake to righteousness. Psalm 78. Towards his villagers in Israel. Then the people of the Lord went down to the gates. Awake. Awake, Deborah. Awake. Awake, utter a song. Arise, Barak, and lead away your captive son of Abinoah. Then down marched the remnant of the nobles, the people of the Lord marched down for me against the mighty. Verse 15, and the princes of Issachar came with Deborah, and Issachar was faithful to Barak into the valley. They rushed forth at his heels, but among the clans of Reuben were great searching of heart. Why, Reuben, did you linger among the sheepfolds, listening to the piping for the flocks? Among the clans of Reuben, they were great searching of heart. Gilead remained beyond the Jordan. Why did Dan stay with the ships? Ashes sit still at the sea coast and remained by the creeks. These came not forth to battle for God's people. But Zebulun was a people who endangered their lives to the death. Naphtali did also on the heights of the field. The kings came and fought. From the heavens, the stars fought. From their courses, they fought against Sisera. Oh, my soul, march on with strength. Here's the word of the Lord. Once you were darkness, now are you light. Have no fellowship with the work of darkness. For what they do is a shame to talk about. So forgive us the shame we did. It's a shame to talk about their stuff. But you go and reprove darkness. And when you reprove it, where it was dark, it will become light. Okay? So this week, wait till I tell the story. I will not tell the story. I walked into a witchcraft place. Astrologers and stuff. Not the story, this is it. So I walked out, we did rebuke it, got rid of it, everything like it. Okay? So my phone started ringing yesterday. Hello. Hello. French lady. I'm a French lady. Is this Prophet Kubas? I am a very sick woman. I have cancer. Oh. I've heard from doctor that I can find you to be healed. So I said, yes, I can minister to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. She said, oh, I will be leaving within two days, so I will not be able to see you. So I prayed for her, and God did a miracle. Half an hour later, my phone rang. Hello. 
I'm from Zambia. I'm just here for two days. I'm leaving again. I come to see doctor here in Johannesburg. But he can't help. He said, I must phone you. He gave me your phone number. I said, no. So I pray for the woman. About half an hour, I sit on least last night. My phone ring again. Hello. I said, Pastor Kubis. Pastor Kubis, I'm from Cape Town. I came down to doctor in Johannesburg. He can't help. He said, I must phone you. You'll be able to help. I said, Lord. So here's the astrologist working for me. Giving one phone call after the other to people to phone us. Now, this is what's happening. Uh, where is your church? Can we visit your church meeting? The other one. Where is your church? The other one. Can we come to your meetings? Okay. So now they all, you know, okay. So I just walked down and said, Father, I rebuke this stuff. I curse this evil stuff. I shake myself loose from all this stuff. So light, reprove darkness. Now there's light. Now this astrologer is giving my phone number that he's not supposed to do. Okay, just somebody maybe. Did you went to consult an astrologer? No! No, I did not went to consult an astrologer. <laughs> but these people are now consulting us. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, sorry. Right. So, whatever is reproved of light becomes light. So, 1 Corinthians 15. If the dead are not raised, why do we baptize ourselves for the dead? Paul says, I die daily. So what does it help me if I got baptized, if I don't believe that I will live? So I got killed and I got killed and I got killed, but I rose because I grabbed for immortality, although I only got eternal life. But I give you a mystery. We shall not all die. There will be a group that will be changed from mortal to immortal. Because... The life-giving spirit, Jesus Christ, is now inside of people. So there will be a group that will have greater authority and power on the earth. Okay? So uh, God says, uh, but you, you must shine like the stars of heaven. Because my people that had my power over them were like the stars. But because of disobedience, they became like the sand. But my throne is in the heavens and earth is my footstool. So I want you to know that you are raised with Christ as a star. You can shine your light on the earth by sitting in the heavenly place. You can have dominion and power. You can heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, preach the power of the kingdom because I have sent you with all power and all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me to give you. Go, it's time to awake to power. So awake out of darkness. Let Christ shine upon you. Let this light be in you. Okay? So the people of Israel were stubborn and rebellious, yet I came every time I helped them, every time I helped them. But here comes my anointing oil that will cause you to be a powerhouse. Yes. Tell the wind to blow from the north. Tell the wind to blow from the south. So let the anointing oils of aloes and frankincense and myrrh and calamus, let the fragrance spread, let the anointing take over, so that the yokes and bondages of wickedness and darkness can be broken. So, O oh Lord, would you awake with your arm of strength so that the redeemed of the Lord can once again have joy and gladness? Take them out of their captivity. So awake, awake. Shake yourself loose from the dust. Come out of this wickedness and come sit in your dignified place. All right? So uh, back to the judges. They sinned. God sent evil kings. They were oppressed. They cried. God helped. Over and over and over and over and over and over. Till a certain prophetess by the name of Deborah comes said, Awake. 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 Awake to what? Awake and sing some songs unto the Lord. 
Because the willingness will come when we see the power. And now 40,000 people are willing to praise God. They are away from the weapons of warfare, but they are at the place of water. But God says, here comes all the tribes. I call them Dan, Manasseh, I call them out. You see, why are they still doing that? Why are they still doing that? Why are they still doing that? He says, God says, you know what? It's my stars that are fighting. It's because of my stars that we now have victory. Okay, so they were a group of people that listened to the Bora when she said awoke, and they awoke from their sleep so that God could shine upon them. And God said, it's the stars that's been doing this victory fight. Verse 22, then the horses' hooves beat loudly because of the galloping of valiant riders. And we say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We will ride with you. Okay? Curse Mira, says the messenger of the Lord. Curse bitterly its inhabitants because they came not to, help, to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. Blessed above woman shall jail the wife of Heber, the Kenite be. Blessed shall she be above woman in the tent. Sisera asked for water. She gave him milk. She brought him curds in the Lord. And you know, she killed him. She smote that thing through his head. Okay. Verse 27, he sank, he fell, he lay still at her feet, dead. Verse 31, so let all your enemies perish, O Lord, but let those who love him be like the sun, which is a star. When it rises in its might, and the land had peace and rest for 40 years. Chapter 6. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the Israelites cried to the Lord. When they cried to the Lord because of Midian, the Lord sent a prophet. And the prophet says, Thus say the Lord, the God of Israel, I brought you out from Egypt, brought you out from the house of bondage. I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, out of the hand of all who oppressed you, drove them out from before you. And I said, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. Full stop. Verse 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under an oak at Ophrah, not the wintry one. Belonged to Joash the Abysrael. And his son Gideon was beating wheat in the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. Have you heard all these motivational speakers talking to you about how Gideon was hiding in the winepress? And the angel of the Lord said, God is with you, mighty man of valor. No, Gideon wasn't hiding. Gideon was hiding it. The what? The wheat. Gideon wasn't hiding. Gideon was protecting. He was not a weakling. He was a mighty man of valor. God calls him mighty man of valor. The angel of the Lord said to him, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of fearless courage. The Lord didn't say, O sissy, why are you hiding? God said, you mighty man, you are hiding the wheat and protecting it against the Midianites. You're the only one. If you read the chapter, the Bible says Israel was hiding in the mountains. Suckers. And Gideon said to him, O oh, sir, if the Lord is with us, why is all this befallen us? And where are all his wondrous miracles and works of which our father told us? Yeah. Verse 14, the Lord said, Go in this power, you shall save Israel from the hand of Midian. Verse 16, I will be with you, and you shall smite the Midianites as one man. <laughs> Again they sinned, they hide, they're hiding, and Gideon is protecting. The angel of the Lord came and said, God is with you, you mighty Gideon says, if God is.
Psalm 78 says, let the one generation tell the next generation about this wonder of works of God. So that the generation that is yet not born will suddenly believe in God and go for the miracles. So somebody's got to awake and call to God to awake. And if we awake, God that seems to be sleeping, which is not sleeping, will awake for us. In other words, he will come to our aid if he sees we are awakened. So God says, my people will be willing if they see my power. But somebody's got to get me to do the power. We've got to get the wind to blow from the north and from the south so that the anointing oils can be there. We got to know it's the stars that rides on horses. Okay? You got all the revelation stories. Okay? So heaven's open, behold a white horse, and the armies of heaven are on white horses. Who's the army of heaven? We, not the dead ones. Okay? We are in heaven. We are in heavenly places. Why did you get baptized? Okay? So. We raised with Christ, we died with him in baptism, we are raised to a newness of life. So here comes Gideon. He knows the stories. Angel says, Gideon, God is with you. He says, ha, if God is with us, point number one, why are we going through trouble? I don't believe you should go through stuff. I believe the Bible says, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I believe that guy, nothing shall hurt him, nothing shall harm him, nothing shall close to him. He shall see stuff on his left, he shall see stuff on his right, but he shall not close to him. The Bible says, you shall be far from terror. The word fear shall be not named amongst you. Nothing shall hurt you. No evil shall come near you. This is what I believe. I don't believe you should go through stuff. I don't believe God teaches you through stuff. Because if you try to get out of it, you didn't learn your lesson, then God must teach you another lesson. If God teaches you through sickness and you go to a doctor, you're making the doctor a rebel. Because if he gives you a pull that works against your sickness, you couldn't learn your lesson. Okay? If God is taking you through stuff, don't ask the preacher to pray for you. Suffer alone. Learn your lesson from God. Isn't it funny how we would say stuff and not be able to prove it from the Bible, okay? So I believe there's a greater life for the children of God. Okay? God has promised, in blessing I will bless you, and in multiplying I will multiply you. God didn't promise any hurts, any harms, any evil. Oh, the kingdom is not a bed of roses. It is. Okay? God didn't promise you no troubles. He did. Oh, we shall not enter the kingdom without persecution. No, read the chapters, okay? God promised us a life full of peace, joy, happiness, abundance, blessings. That's what God promised us. That'll help a few people. Here's the proof. Gideon, God is with you, you mighty man. He said, ha, if God is with us, why is this stuff happening? Whoa, before you go, point number two. If God is with us, where's the miracles our fathers talked about? Here comes the word of the Lord. Now you can go in this power. God is with you. You will slay the Midianites like one man. Because you asked the two right questions. God's with us? Then why is this happening? I'm not talking about people that stubbornly wicked. And all the time moaning negatively. Where's God? No, that's not where's God. God is already there. So you got to believe, hey, he's with me. Point number two. Where's the miracles? So what am I trying to say to you? God is trying to say, I want to do such miracles in your midst. I want to show such power in your midst. Don't you just want to awake to righteousness? Don't you want to just not be associated anymore with dust? 
Don't you want to come out from amongst them and be separate? Don't you want to not go to their places, not speak their languages, not eat their stuff, not do their stuff, not drink their stuff, not read their books, not do their stuff? Don't you want to just be separate for a while? Don't you want to come out from amongst them? Don't you just want to come a little bit higher and be a star that's shining? Don't you want to be a light that will convince darkness that there's better things in life? Don't you want to prove a different type of life that people will love and say, I'd love to have that. I'd love to be that. I'd love to go there. I'd love to be blessed. Don't you want to be a starry, shining, sunny light for God in this dark earth of ours today? Don't you want to go sit in your heavenly place, have your feet on the ground, but have the authority and the power? So Gideon, you got it. God is with you. Gideon said, then I want signs and wonders. God says, right, what do you want? And God started showing signs, wonders, signs, wonders, signs, wonders. God said, now I'm going to prove you. You got too many people. Go down to the river, and you know what? God sorted them out. And at the end, they had those vessels, earthen vessels, with light on the inside. Broke the vessels. Got rid of the cell of life. Got the light to shine. The people thought God is there. They were encircled. Bam, supernaturally breakthrough power of the almighty God. Amen.